Hello guys, so for today's troubleshooting, it is all about our engine room crane. So they called me and they said that the engine room crane doesn't have a high speed up and high speed down. So we will go to the engine control room or to the engine room and go to the engine room crane and check if it is okay or not because they will be doing a big job in Korea so we are on the way to to King Dao now so let's go to the engine room it's a little bit noisy here so we will do a voice over again So the first thing I did is to test the motor if it is really not working on high speed up and high speed down. So after verifying, then I want to proceed onto the control panel and see what is happening in there. For some, they might be checking the button if it is really working fine or not, but to this situation, you don't have high up and high down. I was thinking that the chances of not having high up and high down if it is just the button is the problem is very low. So I don't want to keep on trying the system and burn the electric motor. That is why I have decided to go up into the control panel and check what is happening on to the control system. Please always observe the use of proper PPE, make a permit to work, and a person should be on standby while you are up and doing this kind of job. So the strategy for this engine room crane, I will be removing the wiring connections onto the contactor and measure what is happening or what is the condition of the motor. So we will remove the U11, V11, and W11 connections and measure the resistance of the electric motor. I have decided to use the multimeter in checking the resistance of the motor since I'm already up in the crane. I'll just use the proper insulation resistance tester once I get down to get the proper device. And then I also carry out the line to ground testing. But within this value, although it is not accurate, I can say that we're having a good winding resistance. And without the motor connections, we will test the high up and down button and see if they will respond. For the contactors, as you can see, they are activating and deactivating, which means that all our interlocks are being met. And so the buttons are in good conditions as well. Then I have decided to measure the faces of the contactor. This is to ensure that we are having equal voltages in all faces. So we have 440 volts at the output of the contactors going to the motor and we have a good motor. Now it's time to check the magnetic brake. This is the only thing that will restrict the rotation of the motor. That is why we're not having a high up and high down. So we need to check this power converter which is the rectifier if it is having a good output voltage. 
so we have a good input and output voltage on our converter now it's time to check the resistance of the magnetic brake and upon checking we are only having 23.9 ohms this is a very low resistance but then I need to move the crane on the accessible area where I can check the magnetic brake actually to to analyze it further so this is your high up co uh, contactor and high down contactor and then you all have this interlock which is this is a limit switch but since this mcu1 is activating and mcd1 is activating whenever we press the button it only means that everything here is okay then we also verified that we have output of voltage from our contactors mcu1 and mcd1 terminals u11 v11 and w11 so everything is fine in there so the one that will release the brake is every time we press the button and MCU1 is activated or MCD1 is activated then AX1 brake contact this is AX1 so the AX1 will be activated because MCU1 is activated or MCD1 is activated so AX1 is activated it was I was able to see AX1 activating and I measured also this PNN every time I press the button although it was not taken into the video so I can verify that I am having voltages on PNN so in this way these are activating this is activating I have output voltage on PNN for sure for now the resistance of this brake is very low so these two motors are for is low up and down and the big one is for high up and down so I open the cover and check the condition of the magnetic brake and see the gap if it is in good clearance Please check your manual and see how much clearance you should be having if you have around 12.5 tons of capacity. As to this crane, we need to have around 1.22 mm clearance. But within that resistance, it is already too low and it is almost shorted. And of course, to be sure, I still need to open this terminal box as there is still terminal block P11 and 11 in this which I need to verify the connection of the magnetic brake. I do not want to miss something that the resistance that I am getting is just coming from the wires or from the coil itself. But during testing, then I can get the same resistance from the main control panel, which is around 23 ohms. It means that our magnetic coil is defective and we need to replace it. I have decided to make a separate vlog on every testing instrument that I am using in fixing or in testing electrical circuits so that's it guys i hope you learned something from this video and please do not forget to hit the subscribe button for more eto updates thank you